Welcome to Monday Motivation. How are you doing? This is Monday Motivation and let's talk in clicks. So glad to be here today. I have been away. You guys know I've been away. I've traveled. I've traveled across the seas. Uh, first time headed to Europe. And if you follow me on Instagram, or even if you've seen the pictures on Facebook, I had an amazing time. I had an amazing time in London, and then I got to go to Paris. Um, and what was so unique about the experience was that I was there for a conference for nurses. And a lot of those nurses, like myself, we did not live in Europe. We didn't live in Europe. But once you become a nurse and you get your license, hello everyone, uh, good afternoon, you're able to assemble and talk about what it is you do in nursing. And let me tell you, nursing on a global scale, some crazy amazing things are happening. Nurses across the across the world are doing phenomenal things. So I'm so looking forward to you guys being able to contribute to our profession and to see what ideas you have. How do you want to change nursing? How are you going to impact your community through nursing? So cool. But you know what I learned too? Um, that in the next 10 years, there's going to be a shortage of like 9 million nurses. Like, so the, the thought that we were left with was to make sure that before you leave nursing, you replace yourself. Also, I take that as bring somebody else into nursing with you. So um, lots and lots to look forward to if you're in the nursing profession, for sure. Welcome, everybody. Come on in. This is this is Motivational Monday slash Let's Talk NCLEX, and it is the place to be. I'm not going to keep you guys today. I'm really not. I miss you guys, but I know that Monday is busy and you have a lot to do. If it's your first time joining the Remar family. I like to introduce myself. My name is Regina Callion. I happen to be the number one NCLEX instructor in the world. Yes, I'm saying it. And I'm also going to um, bring that out and say I'm the number one tease instructor uh, on the planet. So all of my nurses that are interested, interested, I, I call them pre-nurses, pre-nursing students that want to get into nursing, you got to take that T's exam. And I'm here to help you with that as well. So our Monday motivation topic, you're going to love this one. Uh, it is good things come to those who wait. And it's kind of like, hmm, that's questionable. That's questionable. So we're going to get into that. But I love to start motivational Mondays with actual motivation. So here is a picture that we received right on the Remar Nurse Facebook page. Um, and it is from Nurse Jane. She says she has a little cake there, RM balloons. Uh, she's celebrating her first birthday as a registered Remar nurse. How beautiful is that? She used the self-study DVD program to get that license and get it done. I love the smile because it's just like, oh, I made it. I made it. I have my license now. And then you know what? When you have your license, then you can really start celebrating. Take your celebration to a whole nother level. So I love that testimony. I wanted you guys to see this and be happy for uh, be happy for and also encourage your own selves. You're going to be there as well. Um, and another one that we got from nurse Tamika and she just simply posted her official results. They look so good. So she passed August the 12th, was just a few short days ago. And she has those big letters R in behind her name. It's a good look. It's a good look. Congratulations, Nurse Tamika. And everyone that is testing this week, um, we wish prayers to you. We, we wish we wish you um, all the success. We want to see you have those letters behind your name, too. And we will definitely be there to congratulate you once you do. Uh, for a lot of you guys, time is winding up and you've been studying. And now it's time. It's a wonderful opportunity for you to be able to demonstrate that I am responsible enough to have my license. I'm responsible enough. I can do it. Remember, when you're going to take your NCLEX exam, it's not, it's not something that's unexpected. You plant the date. 
you know what you needed to study. So this is something that you actually have control over. And I want you guys to start embracing that mindset that the NCLEX is not something that just happens to you. You don't just wake up one morning and it's like, oh no, my NCLEX is scheduled. It's no, I've been preparing for this moment. I know that it's coming. I'm working every day towards it. And if that's not your mindset, well, then I'm glad that you're here today because that's where I want to get you to that place, right? So remember, everybody that's passing, send us a video, tell your story. We love the videos. You just don't know how much they inspire. They inspire and motivate people that um, that are behind you wanting to get into nursing or thinking that they can't do it. When they see that you guys are passing, they believe that they're passing too. And so I think the testimonial videos are just one way that you can actually make sure passion as well to do that. Hey, we have another event coming literally just around the corner, September 15th. If you guys didn't see, we're bringing back Remar Nurse Uni. Yes, Remar Nurse University is coming back and I will be doing this free event for you, for you, uh, right, right, right in my hometown. Um, so it's Sunday, September the 15th, like I said, and check this out. This will be streaming live for free on YouTube. Yes, we're going to give our YouTube viewers some love. Um, and so if you're not in the Youngstown, Cleveland, Akron, Ohio area, um, then you can watch it on YouTube. But if you are in Northeast Ohio, come to this event in person. It is going to be so amazing. We're actually doing this Remar Nurse University a little different from the past ones that we've done. So if you remember Remar Nurse University, it's a free event. No for information, I'm also doing NCLEX. But if you're familiar with T's, you know that one of the subjects on the T's exam is science. And um, as a part of science, there is a big focus on anatomy, the human body. So I think that my T's event will be very beneficial to those of you taking NCLEX because you know you need that anatomy review anyway. So if you're watching for the T's and then flow into the NCLEX, and then beneficially on the other end, if I have students there to watch the T's, which to be honest, there is more students taking that T's than NCLEX. So we're about to get a whole new group of family members. Um, so the students that are studying for T's, you guys can be an amazing resource because they want to be where you are. They have not gotten into nursing school yet. They don't know, hey, um, what makes me a good candidate? How do I get through nursing school? So it's really going to be a family dynamic. Um, but the T's and the NCLEX review way will flow together. And if you are watching online, you can have the workbook. If you come to the location, we are going to have not only um, the information that you need to pass the test, but we'll be having um, job resources for you guys, um, educational resources. It is going to be an amazing event for nursing students or people interested in nursing. So I'm really excited about it. Um, if you want the workbook, if you're watching online or if you're coming to the location, you need to sign up, of course. So you can sign up by going to remarnurse.com backslash R-N-U. RNU. And yes, 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 this is, this is going to be um, a live streaming event on YouTube, but I want to be able to meet you guys. So if you can come, please come. I, I would love to see you there. So let's get into our next topic, which is fundamentally has to be changed in the way you approach this week. So here is the idea. Good things come to those who wait. And I want to just share with you a little devotional that I um, that I read, and I think it was so um, so applicable to many of our situations. So I'm going to read it to you. It says, "I once met a young man who was waiting on God. His life had been headed down a dangerous path, and he explained he was he hadn't done it to get himself to." A better place for any, nor he asked for help. He had he was faith, is a crucial part of life. 
it's important to really believe and to live as if what you are believing is already truth. God completely, fully, and recklessly. Hebrews 11.1 1, is to take him at his word and build your life. I think a major problem occurs when people use the idea of waiting on God to cover passivity, to mask insecurities to hide behind their greatest fears or make excuses. Abraham had to sacrifice. Jacob had to go. Moses had to obey. Joshua had to march. Jonah had to repent. Nehemiah had to rebuild. Peter had to follow. Paul had to proclaim. As I looked at the Lord's word, even the greatest men and women of faith were given a role in the story that God was orchestrating in their lives because faith always moves us into action, always moves us into action. So it struck me to think that, yes, there is. There is some security in just waiting. But for some of us this week, our waiting is not because we are constrained to wait. Our waiting is because we don't want to move past our fears. We don't want to move past the inconvenience. We don't want to move past sacrificing in order to study, in order to make NCLEX a priority. And we have to be able to do that. You cannot just wait on this type of project. This is not a rescue project. There's nobody coming to take this exam for you. So you have to move in the direction of taking the test. And, and for some of you, that looks like scheduling a test date, right? For some of you, that looks like turning in your paperwork, that you need in order to get an authorization to test. For some of you guys, that looks like making sure that you're actually studying, just studying. Even if it's just 10, 20 minutes a day, you're doing something towards your goal. Getting education, getting a license is not, uh, is not something that's going to gradually or passively happen. It takes a lot of action. And you guys know um, I'm in school now. And yesterday, I yesterday, I usually spend my Sundays, honestly, I usually spend Sunday just out. Yesterday I had my Sunday buying books, reading boring, boring chapters turning in discussion notes. And so it's like, man, if I really want this degree, I have to work and I can't sit around and wait because only thing that is going to happen if I wait is that deadlines are going to pass and I'm going to be getting F's. And how can I be the number one NCLEX instructor in the world with all F's in my classes? I just can't. So this is what I thought. Good things come to people who wait, but better things come to those who get out and get them. And that's true. Better things come to those who get out and get them. And for some of you, it's like, man, I need to get out and get a job. I need to get a job. I need to get, you know, this test done, all these things. And for a real life application, too, sometimes, you know, we, we're, we're in situations in our lives and it's tough because we need to get out of those situations and we're waiting for somebody to come and we're waiting for somebody to tell us what to do when we can just get up and do it ourselves. We can just get up and go. And it reminded me actually of another thought where Jesus meets a man, he's sitting at the pool of Bethesda and Jesus is like, what, what are you doing? What, what are you? And the man is like, I don't have anybody to put me in the pool. I need a man to come and put me in the pool. Ladies, this is it. The, he said, I need a man to come and help me. Um, and Jesus told him to get up, get up and get there, get up and get, take up your bed and get up. Right. And sometimes we just need that command to just get up and go. There's no man coming. Ladies, there's no man coming to rescue you. You have to get up and get it for yourselves. All right. So that, that was my thought today. Um, 
Let's get in Klexing. Let's get in Klexing. Um, this is select all that apply. So every question today will be select all that apply. And you know what? You know what? I need to tell you guys this. With the select all that apply, <laughs> with the select all that apply, you have to get every one of the choices correct in order for it to be counted as a good question, right? In order for you to pass it. So let's try to do that today. And I promise you, these ones are, are all select all that applies that I believe that you can do. So I'm looking for four out of four. All right, four out of four. That's all I'm asking for today. Let's see if you guys can do it. All right, so the first select all that apply is simply this. The nurse is caring for a client who has a nasal gastric tube for medication administration and tube feeding. How should the nurse care for the tube during her shift? Select all that apply. Okay, so that's the scenario. You have a patient with an NG tube. How do you care for that tube? All right, here we go. Our options are, number one, flush tube every four hours with hot water to maintain patency. Two, Allow the feeding and tubing to hang until empty up to 48 hours. Three, maintain the head of bed in a high Fowler's position during feeding. Four, check residuals and replace them unless the amount is greater than 300 milliliters. Five, check under the adhesive tape on the nose daily to assess for skin breakdown. Or six, assess the sounds before feeding and feed at half the rate if bowel sounds are absent. Okay, Remar nurses, put in your answers. Write down your answers. Facebook, YouTube, what are you guys thinking? Write down your answers and then press the share button. All right? Press the share questions. You like them. They're tough, but they do help you to see how much content you know. We're talking about NG tubes here. Very common. You see them on the medical unit. You see them on the surgical unit. You can see them in peds when kids don't want to eat. Very, very common. Here are the correct answers. I see, the, I see you guys. Here are the correct answers. They are three and five. Yes. There are a couple people I see. I see that you got it right. So, okay, um, maintaining maintaining the head of the bed in high Fowler's position during feedings is very important because it's going to help prevent aspiration, okay? Um, and then also checking for skin breakdown is thoroughly important when you have that adhesive tape on the skin because it can cause... Um, it can cause the integrity of the skin to be compromised. You know, the other choices here, flush tube every four hours with hot water. I didn't see too many people pick that, but that is not going to be the appropriate way to maintain patency. You can flush the tube, um, but you should not use hot water. OK, because remember, that's going through what? The hot water is going to be going through the nose down into um, the upper respiratory, not the upper respiratory tract, but um, where the upper respiratory tract organs are. And that hot water can cause damage to the esophagus as it goes down. And you don't want to do that to your patient. All right. Um, two, allow the feeding and tubing to hang until empty up to 48 hours. We know you have to change that tubing every 24 hours. Uh, so that's not going to be appropriate to do for your patient. And then check residuals and replace them. This was number four. A couple people picked this. Um, unless the amount is greater than 300. 500 is going to be our number of reference. So we will be checking for residuals and always replacing them unless the amount is greater than 500. Um, then you want to notify the physician. But in general, if you pull something from your patient, you need to replace that because you can cause electrolyte imbalances. And then um, assess the bowel sounds before feeding. This one's going to be incorrect. And feed at half a rate if the bowel sounds are absent. If you don't have bowel sounds, 
then there could be a possible obstruction um, in, in your patient. And so you would not want to continue to feed uh, a cause for you to stop the feeding and let the doctor know. Okay. The nurse tells the client may be impaired sleep. The client has a hard time sleeping. What can I do to help with that? Which recommendation should the nurse make? Let's select all that apply. Let's select all that apply. So here we go. Here we go. All right. So um, hmm, something happened here where the answers are already here. So I'll just go over this one with you guys. I apologize for that. I'm going to blame Mark for that one. Um, but here are here are here were the choices. And then I'll just go over. We talk about prednisone for sleep. Prednisone is a steroid. So we don't want to mix steroids and alcohol. And the reason why when we're talking about sleep is that alcohol has a like a sedative effect on you, but it won't make you stay asleep. So it actually inhibits you from falling into that deep sleep. So alcohol is set to disrupt REM sleep. Um, keeping the bedroom dark and quiet, that's going to promote rest as well, something that will encourage sleep. Um, maintaining the same consistent sleep schedule, that will promote rest. Eating a large heavy meal at dinner is not going to promote sleep because your body will be um, trying to digest food as opposed to trying to relax. And then um, reading or doing another quiet, non-competitive activity before bed, that's going to be helpful because that can also um, help your body to relax. And of course, I don't think anybody would have picked doing vigorous exercises at all, at all before bed because that's going to pump your body up. Let's do question number three here. Question number three says, the nurse is precepting a new nurse in the psychiatric unit. The nurse is discussing interventions for schizophrenia. Which statement by the student nurse indicates an understanding of management of schizophrenia? Select all that apply. So psychiatric question here. Number one, I should be warm and friendly to put the client at ease. Two, I can reassure the client that he is in a safe environment. Three, puzzles or word games are good activities to engage in. Four, I can help the client use art or writing to express his feelings. Or five, I won't tell the client when I am leaving so he won't get upset. All right, here you are. Go ahead and put down your choices for how you would manage how you would manage a client with schizophrenia, how you would manage a client with schizophrenia. All right, select all that apply here, content-based, how do we treat our patients? Two, three, and four, okay. I see, two, I see a lot of two, threes, and fours. Two, threes, and fours, one, two, three, four. What do you guys say? What are you saying here? Two, three, and four. A, a lot of two and four only. Three is a good one. Three is a good one. One, two, and four. Okay. All right. So let's go over the answers together. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Jeffro. Thank you, John, for participating. Princess Charles, see you again. All right. Um, here we go. Dawn, every, thank you, Patricia. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being here with me today studying. The correct answer is going to be two, three, and four, two, three, and four. So with this two, three, and four, um, number one, I should be warm and friendly. Um, when, you, when it comes to schizophrenic clients, remember that they have the capacity to misinterpret reality. So if you're overly friendly uh, to that client, it can cause them not to really take hold of the nurse patient relationship and see you possibly as a peer or a, rom a romantic interest. So you have to be careful with that. 
Um, I can reassure the client that he is in a safe environment. Absolutely, you definitely will want to reorient the client and let them know that they are safe. Puzzles and word games are really great for clients with schizophrenia because the puzzles and the word games are um, very concrete activities that they're able to complete and do and keep them um, engaged. Four, I can help the client use art or writing to express his feelings. Of course, schizophrenic patients can have um, different outlets for therapy in art or journaling is a good, a good example of that. And then the last one says, and you can, you can see it, it says, I won't tell the client when I'm leaving him so he won't get upset. So be there and when you will leave will definitely help facilitate a working relationship. Because remember, for NCLEX, a huge point about dealing with uh, psychiatric patients is allowing them to understand from the very beginning that this relationship is not permanent. So during the orientation phase, what are we supposed to be talking about? We're supposed to be talking about the termination phase. Like we're supposed to be talking about, hi, I'm Regina. I'll be your nurse while you're here in the hospital. You know, I'm, I'm happy to help you, assist you, answer questions. But this relationship is not going to be forever. So um, letting the client know at every opportunity when you're leaving helps to reinforce um, the situation of the nurse patient relationship. Very important point for NCLEX. Let's look at the final question. Here we go. It says, oh yes, here we go. A client who is Muslim is refusing to eat food served to him. Okay. The nurse should do which of the following select all that apply. All right. Number one, so we have a Muslim patient. They're not eating their food. What are the action steps of the nurse? Number one says arrange a meal time um, that will not interrupt prayer times. Remove farm raised catfish from the food tray. Three, arrange with the family for halal food to be brought from home. Or four, deliver food by a nursing assistant of the same sex. So we're talking about where to is Muslim. That's okay if you just checked in. Um, if you just checked in, go ahead and go ahead and go ahead, put your answer down. This is a select all that applies. So remember that it's going to be more than one question, right? More than one question, right? One, three, and four. Okay, now you guys, now you guys are gonna have to let me know when I reveal the answer to you. All right, you guys don't have to let me know because based off of my research, based off of my research, the correct answer one and three and five and one and two. Okay, so based off of my research here with the Muslims um, patient, we have the correct answers being. One, three, and four. One, three, and four. Rebecca, I see you got that one right. One, three, and four. Um, Chinway, you got it right. Jasmine, I see on, on YouTube. Shout out to my YouTube. Um, Millette, you got it right. Perlina, perfect. One, three, and four. So this is why. Um, so number one, with, with the Muslim faith, you do have to pray multiple times throughout the day. So if the meal times are conflicting with prayer, then we know that our Muslim patients, they are not going to eat. They're going to prioritize prayer over that. So we want to make sure that the meals are not conflicting with their prayer times. And we're going over this because cultural competence is something that is huge for the NCLEX exam. So even if you've never taken care of a Muslim patient, you need to understand aspects of their religion, the general aspects of their religion. Okay. Um, two, removing um, farm raised catfish from the food tray. So what I, um, what I saw, what I studied was that um, farm raised animals uh, and particularly fish that are, when the fish is removed from water and allowed to pass die that way, that's considered lawful and they eat that fish. All right. That's what I saw. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just going by the reference. Um, so that would have been OK. Number three says arrange with the family for halal food to be brought from home. Yes. 
that is a great um, idea if possible because people have are used to having a, a certain type of diet and hospital food may differ very much from what they're eating culturally. Okay. And then the last one is deliver, deliver food by a nursing assistant of the same sex. So in the Muslim faith, um, modesty is very important, especially between women um, and men. And so making sure that all of the caregivers are of the same sex is going to facilitate that care being able to be provided uh, more readily, more readily. So do you guys see why this one is correct? You guys see the now for all of these? Yes, 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 yes. All right, great. So you guys, okay, you guys, I told you this wasn't going to be a long one. So before we close, I just want to remind you guys, mark your calendars. These are the events that we have coming up. These Team Remark 30th. All right. Many, so many people got on here and said, How do I get the books? Listen, we are extending the sale that we had. We're extending it through this week. Okay. Bringing back $10 off for every year. Everybody should be going crazy right now because you guys know we did the um, $10 off of my. That's the books. That's the DVDs. So listen, if you've been out of school for six years, that's $60 off. If you've been out of school for 10 years, that's $100 off. If you've been out of school for 15 years, that's $150 off. That sale, that sale has been changing the game for people preparing for NCLEX. And check this out. If you missed it last week, we are doing it for another full week. No excuses. This is no excuses Monday for those of you who are watching and don't have my products because the testimonials, the things I teach from all come from those amazing books and that DVD program. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. Um, I pass NCLEX. Oh, okay. Nurse Dadu. Um, she says, I pass NCLEX. I pass NCLEX. And on Thursday to God be the glory. Remar, you are the real deal. You are the real deal. Holy field. I'm adding that on there. Um, so I need you guys. I need you guys to really make sure that you're in the same boat as nurse Dadu. She says, I pass NCLEX. It's on for me. I'm leaving the group. Aloha. I'm leaving. Uh, Lord, it says, ah, okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, you'll get the, you'll get the, you'll get the recording. <laughs> Somebody said I'm late. Oh my goodness. I missed it. I missed it. Um, check out the rest of the date. September the 11th is our next winning Wednesday. The Facebook group, the Remar Nurse Facebook group. If you're not in that group, you're missing out. You're missing out because we post amazing questions in there. Um, we get testimonials. I also do private reviews just for that group. We're all about making sure that you guys are confident and comfortable. And go ahead and sign up, remarnurse.com able to sign up for that NCLEX review, tease review, tell somebody you love that this is YouTube. We're showing our YouTube viewers some love, so you can't miss it. You can't miss it. All right. Um, now we are going to talk about the next winning Wednesday, just to cap it all off. The next winning Wednesday, the next winning Wednesday will be September 18th. OK, and 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 we are going to get into some more good content. The, the thing I love about winning Wednesdays is that I'm doing content for you guys. So I keep talking about the content, but I have that for you. So make sure that you don't miss any of those great events. We have so much coming up for you guys. This is literally no excuses why you're not studying. We love you. We love you. We love you so much. We want your heads to be in the books. All right. So did you enjoy today? If you enjoyed today, don't miss out. OK, sign up for the Remar Nurse University event. Also, um, share this video, share this video, guys. There's somebody that needs to see it. Don't there's somebody that wants to be a nurse. They don't even know that I'm doing teas right now. It's like a it's like a well-known secret within our family. But we got to get the word out because there's a lot of people looking for help. And let me just tell you something about teas. You think NCLEX is tough. Teas is this teas is tough. I'm reading people that say and the advice is insane. People that are saying, I, I'm taking a whole year off to study for T's, to prepare myself. That's 
I'm saying like something to me, I'm taking a whole year off to study for NCLEX. Um, you don't need that. You guys know we do it the Remar way. You get in, you get out. And so we want to make sure that everybody that can get into nursing can get into it and they find Remar and they find our Remar nurses as a, a, a source of help for them. So, 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 so guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Mark your calendars, remarnurse.com. Take advantage of that sale. You actually, the thing about the sale is that you have to call in in order to get your Remar relative discount. It's a family thing. At this point, it's a family thing. Write down this number because you need the package and you need the discount. You won't find it online anywhere. 855 625 39 Six, six. I love that. It just flows so nicely. 855-625-3966. Drop everything. Make the call. Ask the Remar family what's best for me. How do I get that discount? I needs it. I needs it. All right. Um, I love Mondays because you know what? Mondays are a fresh start. They're also the chance to set a new tone for the rest of the week and just a reminder that, hey, at all the places you could be, the graveyard is not one of them. You are alive today. And today is a great day to be alive. So make the most of it. Make the most of it. Um, if you find yourself still needing support, um, you can't get to the phone, go ahead and send an email, support at remarreview.com to have your questions answered. But again, we're ready for you. 855-625-3966. All right, guys. And I cannot leave without saying the truth of the matter. And the truth of the matter is that we can, we will, and we must pass in clicks. <laughs>